Hi guys, this is Nian. Today I'll be painting this fun tropical beach. It's really easy but it does involve a few elements to paint in which you can play around with the composition yourself but I'll be showing you my version and how you can paint those individual elements and compose your own painting. So I'm going to begin by masking the paper that I'll be working on. This is just a square 14 centimeters by 14 centimeters, but you can create this into landscape or portrait layout as well. Here, instead of masking the paper on table, I decided to mask the paper and just fold it back because I want to be able to rotate the page, but you can prep it however you're comfortable. Here I'm only going to sketch out wavy lines for me to estimate the shoreline, drop off, and where I want to put the trees. I also added small circles where the sand is to represent umbrellas and also boats with simple shapes. Once I'm done sketching, I'm going to prep by adding masking fluid on the umbrellas and boats. This is optional, of course it's possible to paint around it, but it's much faster to paint when those small areas are covered so you can paint right on top of it without worrying. I'm also going to add little dots around the back and also where the water is going to be for added sparkle but if you don't have masking fluid you can skip this step and use white gouache at the very end instead. I'm just going to leave the masking fluid to dry now and I'm going to start painting the trees that I've sectioned at the corner. For the colors I'm going to be using Hansi Yellow by Daniel Smith, Burnt Sienna Ultramarine Deep and Sap Green by Holbein. I'm just going to activate and swatch the individual colors on my palette so it's easy for me to access the colors. I started with the sap green because that's going to be the main green that I'm going to be using for the trees. And I took a bit off Hansa Yellow without washing my brush so it has a bit off the sap green which I actually want as a mixture for a warm green. And the rest of the colors which I'm also going to mix with the sap green. I'm also going to take some of the burnt sienna to mix with the light green as the first color mixture for the painting. For the trees, I'm just going to paint blobs and patches around the selected area. I'm going to still leave some white space to make sure that I can always add to it with different shades of green. I'm just altering the shapes and size to make sure everything looks different. This is going to be from the bird's eye view, so you're looking from the top of the trees which will look more like green bushes so don't worry too much about the shape just make it look as random as possible. You might also see that I'm leaving a small area which leads to the shoreline. This is where I want to create some huts or housing behind the trees but it's up to you if you would like to follow this composition or create your own with these elements. Next I'm going to add more sap green for a darker shade and I'm going to paint between the lighter green so the lighter green will pop out more and we're going to keep building on the darker green by also adding the burnt sienna as well as the ultramarine deep and paint in the darker areas to enhance some of those parts in between the trees. After I'm quite happy with the placement of the darker green, which at this point I want to just create a nice contrast between the values, I'm going to add some trees along the edges to make the line look more organic and not completely straight. It's also okay to leave some white space in between the trees because we can always fill it in later on. Once I'm done, I'm just going to use a hair dryer to dry that area off so I don't accidentally smudge it. And after that, I'm going to start drawing out rooftops for huts. And for this, I just drew out slightly sheared rectangles facing each other so they're in a slight angle. And then I'm just going to connect the bottom so you can see a little bit of the wall. Next, I'm going to paint the sand. And for this, I'm going to create two mixtures. The first one is a mixture of yellow ochre and jaune brilliant. And for the other one, I'm going to add vermilion to give it a bit of a red hue to the color. You can change up the ratio also to create different hues. For the application, I'm still using the same small brush because I want to use the dry brush method where you can see distinct textures. I find that the sand can look very boring and flat, so I decided to apply this technique by painting using the side of my brush instead of the tip with full pressure so there isn't enough paint to spread evenly which in the end create those textures and I'm just going to alternate the colors with the more reddish tone I'm going to apply near the water to suggest that the sand is wet and where the water will be covering the stand where the drop off is I just used the light brown from before so it has more of a yellow hue and I find that this works nicer with the green that I'm going to glaze for the water.
Next I want to work on the water so I want to make sure that the sand is completely dry since I want to paint on top of it and I'm just going to use my hair dryer to make the process faster. Once everything is dry, I'm going to start mixing my colors. I'm going to mix using four colors. The first one is Permanent Green, then Manganese Blue by Winsor Newton, and also Ultramarine Violet by Mgram. Then I also decided to add Yellow Ochre by Holbein to mix into the blue-green color. So basically here I have a few shades, the main one being the blue-green. And as you can see, I don't completely mix in the Manganese Blue as I want some parts to be more blue and some parts near the shoreline to be a bit more green in hue. So towards the bottom I decided to add the manganese blue by itself while the paint is still wet and I'm only applying by dotting my brush since the wet surface will help it spread naturally. While the paint is still wet, I also took a fairly thick consistency of the ultramarine violet to apply it at the bottom of the water again. And I'm only going to apply it by dotting the same way that I did previously, so you can see some parts of the previous color peeking through and mingling with each other. Once I'm done, I'm just going to dry it with a hair dryer so everything settles and that way you can add more layers onto it. So once everything dries, I'm going to apply the same colors again to intensify it. I want the water to be vibrant and inviting and as you can see because the bottom layer is now completely dry, you're able to see cleaner lines with cleaner edges. So I'm going to take this opportunity to add texture to the water by painting it using thin S shapes or squiggly lines. For the colors, I'm going to basically apply with the same method as before. I'm basically just going to use more greens and yellow ochre towards the shoreline and with the dark blue where the deepest end is. I also added a bit of vermilion to darken the deepest part again, but I use this very sparingly as I don't want the colors to be muddy. Next I'm going to be painting the roofs of the little huts and I'm going to begin by using a thin consistency of a purple mixture which is made from vermilion and ultramarine violet and then I'm going to glaze it again once the paint is completely dry with an orange mix. This time is from a mixture of vermilion and yellow ochre so the orange now looks a bit more natural and less saturated. Then using a thick consistency of the purple mix I'm going to paint the front face of the house also so it looks like it's in complete shadow. I made a lot of purple mix because I decided for all of the shadows to be depicted by that color. So I'm going to imagine that the light is coming from the top and slightly to the right or whichever direction you decide on. And I'm going to apply that purple to areas where I feel like there would be cast shadows, especially around umbrellas, trees and also the boats. For this I want to make sure that all of the shadows are roughly facing the same angle so everything looks nice and cohesive and that way it looks more convincing as a painting and as for the trees remember to play around with the length of the shadows as well because different heights of trees will cost different lengths so just remember to keep everything nice and organic. And I'm also going to glaze one side of the roof of the huts with the same purple again to show where the light is coming from. I know I haven't painted the shadows of the boats yet, that's because I want to paint per section and on the top left I decided to add some rocks along the side and for that I used a mixture of yellow ochre, ultramarine deep and vermilion and to paint the rocks I want to again create patches like the trees but the side is more curvy and rounded with less edges compared to the trees. I'm also going to vary the size so everything looks nice and natural. I want to make sure that there are large formations as well as small ones around the edges. Then using a thicker consistency of the same mixture, I'm going to create uneven surfaces by painting on random spots of the rock so everything looks uneven and a little bit jagged. Then I'm going to use the same purple mix from before to also paint the cast shadows of these rocks. Mm -hmm. 
I first used a thick consistency of ultramarine violet to also add darker shadows on the rocks on the smaller areas. Then once I have them in place, I went in with thinner consistency for the glass shadows. I also decided to add tree shadows around the rocks to suggest that there might be tall trees which are outside of the frame. For the shadows, I like to actually enhance it with a thicker consistency of the same color and just paint on top of it. I think that it brings more complexity to the painting, but it's up to you whether you want to follow through with this or not. But I personally like seeing the contrast in values because it also enhances the lighter colors. For the shadows of the boats, I'm going to first place the main shape of the shadow, then once I have them in place, I'm going to use the tip of my brush to add water lines along the side so it doesn't look too static. This depends on how you approach painting the water though. Mine is quite textured and therefore I'm suggesting movement in the water which also causes a slight disturbance to the shadows of the boats. But if you create your water to be very still then you don't have to add the extra lines for the water texture. I'm also going to add a thicker consistency where the shadow is closest to the boat so the shadow looks like it's slightly fading to a lighter color as it extends out. Then I switch to my small brush so I can start adding finer details like the pattern or texture of the roof where I decided to paint fine lines using the orange mix from before on one side and purple mix with the other side. And I'm using a thick consistency of the shadow color again to also enhance the separation between the roof and the front face of the huts. After I've placed down the shadows, then I'm going to take off the masking fluid on paper by just rubbing it with my finger. Remember to always be gentle or else you might end up damaging the paper. Then I'm going to clean those edges with the shadow color and also my small brush to give a cleaner, more distinct line so they don't look all wonky. We're going to paint the small details now. You can pick any vibrant color which would stand out and pop against the surrounding color for the umbrellas and also the boats. I feel like these are the features which bring such a tropical holiday feel to the painting. For the umbrellas, I used vermilion and also a mix of ultramarine violet and manganese blue. And as for the boats, I tried to use mostly warm colors so it stands out against the blue of the water. I also decided to add small shadows using the same mix as before on the boat so the boat doesn't look too flat compared to everything else in the painting. So this is how I ended up painting the boats but you can also try to create your own designs and color combinations as well. Since I'm quite happy with the color of the water now, I decided to add the water lines with white gouache. I used the thick consistency so it would be opaque against the other colors and I used my small brush to paint a few thin lines, slightly ranging the thickness as well and where the edge of the shoreline is. I also decided to add some reddish sand tone so the area doesn't look too flat and I also feel like the wet sand is slightly darker in color so I used that color to depict the wet sand. Then I went back to adding more lines near the shore as well as small splashes around the rocky area where the water hits. For added texture, I also painted small dots around the waterline to represent a bit of sea foam. But because we are looking at this from a really far distance, I only painted a tiny bit so it doesn't overwhelm the painting. For the water to not look too flat, I also decided to add a medium to thin consistency of the shadow mixture to paint a very thin shadow under the sea foam because the white of the sea foam sometimes casts a shadow as well. And with some of the colors that I have left on my palette, I added some permanent green to also 
give a bit more texture to the water with more curved lines and squiggly lines. For some added sparkle to the water, I added more white gouache as light reflection. This is why I mentioned before that it's not necessary to use masking fluid. However, I feel like the masking fluid does give it something special to the painting since I always enjoy looking at the white negative space from the white of the paper. Once I'm done painting the waves, I thought that I was done so I took the masking tape off around my painting because I forgot to actually look at the whole painting and fix certain areas but anyway it was still satisfying to look at but I also ended up going back to certain areas and paint over it. The first thing I noticed is the trees behind the huts which I forgot to place some shadows so I just went back with the same color for the shadows and did that area and I added the rest of the paint to the other trees as well. I also decided to add more of the reddish tone of the sand color to the area on the right hand side since it looked a bit empty and since I realized that lone umbrella looked like it was placed a bit too far back so I tried to balance it out by using that trick. So the fun thing about this painting is the fact that it's from a bird's eye perspective and I like the fact that you can rotate this however you would like and it still looks like a decent composition which is why I decided to paint it on loose paper instead of my sketchbook. So basically you can take any of these elements and add more of them to your composition if you would like. For example, I actually tried to add more rocks on the right hand side where the sand looked a bit too empty, but I felt like it ended up closing the composition and it felt a little bit too crowded for me. So I opt the previous one to be my final composition without adding the additional rocks. But if you like the second composition, feel free to pick whichever one you prefer. And that's pretty much it for this one. I hope you guys enjoyed this and learned something new and I'll see you at the next one. Bye!